This is the, the photo of the Queen I got when I was 100. I mean, she doesn't personally do it all because there's too many of us. But it's nice to get one. And most people who are interested, you know, all want to know. The first thing they ask me, did you get a letter from the Queen? I'd say I got a photo of the Queen in the cars. Mm. Oh, my parents were great. Um, Mum was Scottish. She came from Selkirk and a uh, good cook. And Dad was a gardener. We had all our own vegetables and chooks and ducks. And uh, then we had the holiday place. And they were great fisher folk. Both my parents did a lot of fishing. Dad was a, a lifesaver at Freshwater before the First World War. And then he was a stretcher bearer. It was the Fifth Field Ambulance, went to um, Gallipoli and Europe. He never talked about the war much, actually. And in his diaries, he never spoke about all the blood and gore and everything, you know. Some people, when wrote diaries, they'd mention, you know, all about the wounded. But then he might say, I've been on duty so many hours or something, but he didn't say what the cases were, how bad the people were, you know. But his father was interesting, Thomas Power. He interviewed Ned Kelly, and he was the first journalist to reach Glen Rowan when Ned was on the run. And he actually interviewed Nell, Ned when he was caught, but he told Dad Ned had nothing to say. Um, shorthand, typing and bookkeeping. And... Um, on English, because I remember he had spelling, a lot of spelling. And uh, But I was always a good typist. At school, the headmistress used to get me to type stencils because I was accurate, I didn't make mistakes. So when I was at business college, if you had the highest speed and correct, no errors, you wore a, a brooch. And I won it one time. And I didn't say anything to the family. We were just having dinner one night. And my father spotted it and he said, what's that you've got on you? And I told him, told him but I only got it the once, but at least I did get it. Uh, a Jewish lady asked for volunteers. So I was the only one in the office that volunteered. So after work, we'd uh, take orders from the servicemen, what they wanted to eat and then pick it up and bring it to the tables. And then when the meal was finished and we'd washed up, that was when I first saw a, a dishwasher and uh, we went into another room and we danced. So we, we'd end up dancing with the servicemen that were there. It was a big, big building in Hyde Park and it had the big room, big kitchen, then this other room where we danced, so it must have been pretty big. But the food was pretty good. It wasn't very, very varied, but it was good quality. I remember the corned beef was very, very good. And of course, sausages, <laughs> curry sausages was one of them, I remember. And um, I wasn't terribly good to remember who, whose order was what. I'd bring the trays and they'd have to sort out their orders half the time. I wasn't meant to be a waitress, but, but it, was, it was something. And then another job we did, in Bridge Street there was a place where you just entertained them. You played table tennis or you danced with them or you just talked to them. Yeah, I forgot about that one, yeah. I forgot what that was called now. I think they were just needed company, someone to talk to themselves, the servicemen. And during the war, I met up with an, an American one up at um, Kulungatta. Another girl from work and I in 1944, we went to Kulungatta. There were a lot of American, And one was staying in the guest house where we were. And they asked me how to show them how to surf. They said, we're watching me in the surf apparently. And so I had platonic friendship with that fellow. Um, so I can't even remember his name. <laughs> yeah, so uh, and, and up at Cool and Gather they had this jazz land, I think they called it, 
watching the, all the Americans do all that uh, dancing they did, you know, remember? <laughs> I could never do it. <laughs> so I liked the work. Yeah. Doing shorthand and bookkeeping, typing. <laughs> so, yeah. But during the war, I worked for the Department of Interior and I was secretary to the accountant there. And, but then when the war ended, all married women got a letter saying we all had to leave on the 31st of December, unless we were ready a war widow, which I wasn't then, of course. So um, that's when I left uh, at the end of 45. And when the war ended, um, a lot of people been in the streets and rejoicing and dancing and everything. But I felt the opposite. I felt sort of, not cheerful exactly, but glad the war was over. You know, I had a cousin prisoner of war who actually died before the war. We didn't know till after the war. And uh, my brother and my husband and my brother-in-law were all, all in the army, you know. So I went on the roof, that's where we worked, and just was up there for a while. Don't know what I was doing, but that's what I did. Then I went home to Mum, to be company for Mum. And then afterwards, all the others in the office were dancing and singing in the streets. But for some reason or other, I didn't feel like that. I just, just felt I should be with Mum, you know. His name was Noel, Noel Tanner. It was the first real date was to see Four Feathers at the State Theatre, front seat of the dress circle, and a box of chocolates and ice cream. And that continued all the time. We've still got my box of chocolates and ice cream in them. <laughs> so, um, so we, as I say, we both were the same kind of people. Well, my mother was like that, you know. You're careful with money and not mean, but careful that you didn't waste it on. Like we never went out for dinner and things like that because we were saving up to build. I've still got the plans of the house actually, but uh, of course we never got around to, to building because of his, him dying. I was married during the war, 1943, and uh, lived at home until the war ended. And that was our wedding day on the 16th of January, leaving St Stephen's Church only to drive to King Street where the reception was at um, uh, a place that the, the guests could all walk to because of petrol rationing. People didn't have petrol for their cars. So that's why we were married in the city. I remember they had big gladioli in the church and my Bridesmaid was carrying pink that year. I was, that was all arranged, but it wasn't. And um, when I was going, there were soldiers on guard outside state government, and uh, the soldiers saluted me when I was going along to the wedding. And then an uncle of mine put a boot behind the car that took me down to the reception. He tied a boot behind the car to go along. So we went to Newcastle for our honeymoon. And but we're staying in a hotel that overlooked the beach. So when I was first going, I'm thinking Newcastle with BHP and things, you know. But instead of that, we were overlooking the beach and we swam in the beach. And so we, we liked it so much. When he got leave 18 months later, we went back again to the same hotel. Well, as it turned out, my mother-in-law had the heart attack and um, Noel was still in the army. And I went down to Greenwich and I did the cooking, running the house for six people. And um, then I was discharged in February and uh, I got pregnant straight away. But luckily my mother-in-law was back on her feet by then. We knew each other a long time before we started going out together. And we were friends before we were be fell in love with each other. Well, he fell in love with me earlier, apparently. <laughs> Um, so I think that had a lot to do with it. We were friends before we became uh, husband and wife and he was easy to get on, get on with 
Um, we never had an argument. We didn't agree on everything, especially politics. He was a bit of a socialist when I met him. Um, but I was always just followed by parents and <laughs> voted UAP, I think it was called in those days. Um, but we never fought about anything. We never had arguments or fights or anything like that. Maybe if we'd been married longer, we probably would. But only being married those few years, you know, because he came back in 1946 and he died in 49, so we didn't have long together. But he was so easy to get on with, and as I say, no fights, no arguments or anything. I had friends that argued before they were even married. They'd have fights and not talking to each other. I couldn't imagine them. <laughs> they weren't even married and they had fights, you know. So that's why I never was interested in anyone else, because I had such a happy marriage, good marriage. No, what happened first of all? No, his intestinal filled with blood. And he went to the doctor and had it drained. And then he said he'd have to cut the testicle. So in November, they cut the testicle off. Then he went in the Hobart, Sydney Hobart Yacht Race. Then he went again at Easter in the Yacht Race to Jarvis Bay on Mistral. And then he had a backache. And then it turned out in May when he vomited and uh, had pain, it turned out to be a tumour in his stomach, but they treated him for six weeks for stone the kidney before that. So in October he died, as quick as that, at um, Gloucester House. I broke up the leaves every so often too. They're very slow this year. So I've always done something. Roller skating, ice skating, a lot of walking. In the summer we swam, in the winter we walked. Tennis, vigoro, hockey. And I did try skiing, snow skiing. Not terribly good at it, but I did. <laughs> but, I did. <laughs> but the golf's been the main thing. I love the golf. And to go to Northbridge, when we had to play on a Sunday, I had to walk a mile uphill and get two buses and then they were going to build a new one at Lane Cove. So I've been a member there since well, 1961. We paid five shillings to join. It was the last time I played a nine-year-old boy played in the competition. I don't know how, but he did. And he got more points than I did. <laughs> and Jo said when she we finished, made my day. I played with a 99-year-old and a 9 year old. <laughs> well, we went to my niece's wedding and it was formal, so I bought quite an expensive frock. And when we arrived at the church, her neighbour had exactly the same frock on. <laughs> so we stood with the bride with the bridesmaids' bouquets as though we were bridesmaids. They were purple, <laughs> big bunches of flowers on <laughs> And a, a bustle type frock, all very flat in the front and full of the back. So it was quite a joke. <laughs> Young people, they spend so much money going to cocktail bars and spending $10 a drink and things like that. And the next thing you know, they've got all these debts on their credit cards and things. I can't understand it, you know. Never ever been in debt my whole life. I've always just lived within my means, sort of thing, you know. So that's my advice to young people, you know. Don't be extravagant. Save for the future. Whether you're single or married, because single people can buy a home now and uh, have a flat or a unit if they want to on their own, uh, if they save. But then they all complain because they haven't got any money. Well, I think they waste too much. Not everyone, but a lot of them.